Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Elliott Homestead. We are in the thick of winter here, the days when you need to remind yourself to keep your chin up and that spring will eventually come. This is always a hard time on the farm for us because we're not looking back at the height of winter when snow is pretty and the cold is welcomed and the rest is welcomed. We're looking at winter now uh, without rose-colored glasses, shall we say. It doesn't help that the sun gave us a few glimmers of hope this past week. It broke through the clouds and began to shine and warm things up a bit. But now we're back into the snow, and even as we're recording this, we are getting quite the snowfall. I know there's supposed to be things about winter, especially on the farm, that are meant to be sort of charming and heartwarming, and there certainly are. Firewood, for example. It smells good, the fires are cozy, the heat is welcomed. But one can only do so much cozy. However, we're here to encourage you and also ourselves today to not waste the winter days. Something on my to-do list this winter was to make sure that the root cellar and the cold room were organized and that I was shuffling through foods accordingly. I can easily fall into the trap of just working and working and working. And I think coming off summer and spring and fall, that's sort of naturally just your movement is just to sort of keep going. The momentum of all that work outside on the farm and in the gardens can kind of just cling to you throughout winter and you feel like you need to move at this certain pace. But I have to remind myself too that all of that work was put in so that we could enjoy a few days of rest during the winter. And so part of my job is not to just pine for the garden that I'm missing, but to use up the things that we made from last year's garden because all of that took a lot of effort. So today I wanna make a pantry pasta, one that I learned to make in Sicily that's going to be relying on a lot of these goods that we put up months ago, such as oil-packed tomatoes, which I shared with you last year. I'll be sure to put a link for those below the video. This is one of my favorite ways to preserve tomatoes. Today I'll also be using some freeze-dried garlic, freeze-dried basil, and some sun-dried tomatoes as well. Oh, and roasted red peppers. Those are so good. It's amazing how pulling some of these ingredients out of our root cellar and from our preserves actually brings in a taste of summer so quickly on these winter days. I actually forgot that I even had the roasted red peppers until I cleaned out the root cellar. So I was really quite happy to find those. My friends, I'm so excited to introduce you to Bona Fortuna Italian Goods today. I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this video. There's a special link for you to shop with below. I came back from Sicily hungry for their food, and that's when I discovered Bona Fortuna products. The farm is nestled among the Sicilian mountains, and it's managed to be intertwined with the natural biodiversity and local wild flora and fauna. They've taken great strides to protecting and revitalizing olive tree varieties that are native to the area. And now, because of their work, there are over 2,000 BC trees thriving on the farm. All the olive oil is cold-pressed right on the farm to ensure the highest quality. Bona Fortuna was built with a desire of preserving heritage, and as they've grown, that continues to be the mission. So whether that's celebrating Sicilian pasta, made from heirloom grains, or harvesting wild fennel, Bona Fortuna believes in producing high-quality, traditional Italian cuisine products using the best raw ingredients available. I've got a special link for you to shop below. (laughs) 
on a day like this, when you can't accomplish the big outside tasks, sometimes you have to draw your attention to the smaller indoor tasks. So while my tomatoes are roasting with some garlic and salt and olive oil, I'm going to share something new with you that I've sort of brought into my kitchen this winter to keep my spirits elevated when the snow is coming down and it's freezing cold. And it's what I've been calling my bounty table. Now, our root cellar does have a bounty of all these foodstuffs that we've grown over the past year. And the bounty table, the idea of it is sort of to put on display what it is that we should be cooking with and the sorts of things that we have to make a meal with. I find as a home cook that it just inspires me extra to go look at the bounty table and say, okay, I've got good lemons, I've got eggs, I've got fresh parsley, I've got sort of basic inspiring ingredients that make me want to cook something. This is something that you see a lot in old kitchens because they didn't have cupboards or huge pantries. And so a lot of their goods are just laid out, especially when they go to the market every day or two and bring back bags of fresh produce. Now we do bring in produce throughout the winter and I'm happy to put that out for the kids. Things like oranges or pears or fresh parsley, which I just have a really hard time being without. So the idea of this bounty table is to inspire the home cook. And when you come into the kitchen and you see the little olive trees that we're growing and you see some of that bounty put on display, it gives you this feeling of fullness and extra and warmth, a little bit of charm. The kids love it because they can have a little nibble within arm's reach, which is really nice because then I don't have to do that for them. But it's also just to really make it feel bright make it feel inspiring this time of year when it can get a little dreary. One thing many people may not know about you is that you're very aesthetically driven, driven by uh, beautiful images of things. And so the fact that you would need a beautiful spread of food to inspire you on these days fits very much. Beauty inspires me to no end. And it's one of the reasons that I garden. I love to have a beautiful garden, not just a utilitarian garden. It's one of the reasons we go to the effort of so many things that we do on our property and in our home, because I do find that inspires me creatively. And it's one of the reasons that I love to travel to Italy, because there's really no place I've been that inspires me with its aesthetic and with its tastes more than Italy. So this dish, for example, that we're gonna be making today from last summer's bounty, we learned to make from Deborah in a town called Grateri. She runs an Airbnb there and we were staying there with Dolores of Bella Figura and her family and Deborah wanted to cook for us one night and this is what she made. So Deborah's dish was made in really the height of summer when tomatoes were a plenty. But here we are in the middle of winter replicating her flavors and her tastes in our own little home kitchen. But it's one of the things I love about food is that when somebody shares a recipe with you or they cook for you, it's a gift. And you can take that for what it is and just enjoy it as a meal. Or you can take those same flavors and ideas and you can take that inspiration and beauty back to your own kitchen and create it in your own way. When somebody prepares food for you, especially somebody from another culture, um, taking the time to make something that's special to them and they want it to be special to you, it hits just all of those things that we find important by taking a little more time with the things that we do surrounding our food, our family, our farm. It's a great way to see that that's a kind of a universal language. It's very special. It also just so happens that we landed in Grateri on a feast day. So the town put on quite the show. Back in my own kitchen, 
No one's putting on a fireworks show for us. But we have been able to bring what was very special to us here into our ordinary kitchen, and that's valuable. So the base of this pasta is some roasted red bell peppers from the garden last summer, garlic, freeze-dried basil, sun-dried tomatoes, and a very delicious Sicilian olive oil. I have to tell this story because when I came back, particularly from that meal at Deborah's in Grateri, I came back home and I just thought, how do I eat Sicilian pasta still? How can I get that flavor? I'm going to miss it, not having it. So I went looking online and I found a Sicilian-based pasta company. The thing about Sicilian pasta is that mostly it's dried, so it's not fresh pasta because they don't make their pasta with eggs. They make it primarily with semolina flour and water and then it's dried. So the pasta is cooked al dente because it is dried, so it can be. And it just has a very particular flavor and texture to it, I found. Partly that's because of the wheat varieties that they use to make the pasta. It might seem like a little frivolous thing, but to me, having a box of pasta that you're really excited to open that has a story and it has its own little heritage all its own. The same goes for the bell peppers that we made that we pulled out of the garden and spent all those hours roasting and peeling and packing this summer, or the sun-dried tomatoes that sat out in the summer sun before being packed in jars and cared for in the root cellar for all these months. Each of those little ingredients has a story that culminates into a dish so much more than just the pieces. So I suppose my hope for you and for myself is that we don't waste these winter days, but instead we use them to the best of our ability to bring joy to our homes. I think that can come in the form of really good food that reminds us of warmer days. It could be in the form of a really good book, it could be in the form of playing good music, all these sorts of things that maybe you wouldn't have quite as much time for in the busyness of summer. This day, even a winter day, and this dish are a great gift.